Many people from the Soviet Union have heard about the unusual tank houses, and residents of Omsk can still observe an entire neighborhood in the old Kirovsk built out of such buildings. It's not clear why such houses were built, but architects and engineers of the time saw their practical value. Tent houses don't look ordinary or even strange to some people, and certainly not many people nowadays would think of using them as a home. In Soviet times the military and people living in the far north thought differently. The working name of the tank houses is cylindrical unified blocks Tsub. The idea of creating this type of housing came from the need to develop the north. Given the harsh climate and extreme frosts, the main problem was to provide people working in that region with warm and, what is important, safe houses. The polar explorers' housing also had to be durable and mobile. Initially, the polar explorers were accommodated in trailers, which even at minus 20 degrees below zero were freezing. To endure such a test was not possible for everyone. In connection with this, the tank houses were designed to meet all the requirements established for residential buildings. Here it is, an original attribute of the architecture of the Russian North. Borels for living, although the producers hardly imagined that someone would live in their products. Actually, borels were created to transport liquids in freight trains. Just when the North was just beginning to develop comfortable conditions for life, there was not. But there were borels ordinary large bottles with a height of 2 2.5 meters, former tanks. They cut through doors and windows, insulated them, hung curtains, put beds in them and lived. No problem that behind the wall is minus 45 degrees. In the bottles even managed to arrange a shower in the corner. Such bottles formed whole neighborhoods in small towns and villages. They were so-called first bottle or second bottle. The locals got so used to their housing that they no longer found anything extravagant about it. The first tanks for living were designed and made in 1975 by DOS-21, the Sokol woodworking plant. The strategic objective for the plant was to create a more modern design for a mobile dormitory for the north than a wagon house, after which specialists conducted a number of tests and made adjustments. In 1978, the first mobile residential complex was produced on the basis of the tube. The tests are performed at the testing proving ground, and it exceeded all the expectations. The highest marks are given to the quickness of erection, minimum labor costs, reliability in operation, good service and sanitary conditions for living. It's clear that the soup is not like home in our usual way of thinking. The elongated and horizontally placed red-grade cylinder looks more like a railway tanker on wheels or skis, depending on transportation conditions. But this is not a whim of designers, but the grain of an idea that completely solves the problem of blizzards and guarantees the house against snow drifts. Snow charges of all densities and strengths flow freely around the metal cylinder, with thick triple windows that make it look like a deep sea shell with porcelain holes. The cylindrical shape with the smallest possible total surface area of the external envelope and the lowest possible heat loss ensures sufficient internal volume of the rooms. The concave walls even enhance the spaciousness effect of the tube. As a result of the research, preference was given to the most suitable and functional design of the model called Tsub 2M, which was lovingly called Tsubik by northerners. This design is similar to the functioning principle of a thermos. When it's cold outside, it's warm inside, and when it's hot, it stays cool inside. The Polar explorers told that in the frost of minus 59 degrees, the temperature in the house was 16 degrees or higher. The soup was also a good shelter from the cold in particularly extreme conditions, minus 65 degrees and heavy gusts of wind. The second advantage of the soup is high mobility. They can be transported by any available way, on wheels by helicopter. After delivery to the place, the tank only needed to be installed and well fixed, and it was possible to enter and live in it almost immediately, as everything inside was already mounted and ready for use. The specific shape of the rounded housing was also important. This is an excellent protection against possible damage from gusty winds and snow drifts, which are not uncommon in the north. 
the interior space of the tsub is divided into zones. One such housing was designed to accommodate four people. It contains a vestibule, a living room, a bedroom, a kitchen and a bathroom. An inbuilt water tank and heater provide the residents with both cold and hot water. The heating is under the floor and the ventilation system is above the ceiling. Everything is so well designed that heat is distributed evenly throughout the room and no condensation occurs. A number of models also have a shower and the furniture is integrated, so that the interior space is optimized as much as possible. Generally, the length of the house tank was no more than 9.7 meters, although shorter variants were also found, as well as those up to 11 meters long with a diameter of 2.5 to 3.2 meters. The exterior of the tube was covered with sheet steel. Under it was a layer of insulation made of polystyrene foam. Then there was plywood and plastic panels. In terms of heating, there could be two options – standalone from a separate boiler or centralized. Water pumped into the tank by a hand pump. The borals were used for the needs of mountaineers and military research expeditions. The Baikal Amur Amin Line also used them to the fullest extent. After the construction was completed, a lot of models went to ordinary citizens. Today you can also see such tanks on dacha plots, in the form of commercial stalls and as permanent housing in the far north for indigenous people. There are families in Yamal who have been living in these houses for 15 years. In Omsk, four families temporarily live in such a well-equipped borough, waiting for their turn to get a flat. The price range for tsubs is from 40 to 150,000 rubles or from 60 to 2,200 dollars. As practice shows, even today tsub can be used as temporary or dacha housing. Of course, it's not the best option for permanent housing, but it is possible. In the middle 90s, the issue of tsub was frozen, but you can still find ads like this on various internet portals. For sale is a building trailer housing tube 2M borough, the northern version. Two rooms, vestibule, size 11 by 3 meters, exterior sheet steel trim, painted in red-gray color. Signs of civilization are not seen everywhere in our vast homeland. Our spaces are endless, people are in short supply and there are thousands of reasons why people cannot live in normal conditions everywhere. This is especially true of living in extreme conditions low temperatures, lack of roads and other difficulties. These conditions must be created and how quickly it happened and why live in a place where it is dangerous. It is not necessary and impossible to live where there is nothing. But if there is something or there can be, the need to develop the northern latitudes, rich in mineral resources, is relevant now and in the future. In today's modular buildings, there are absolutely all options for a comfortable stay of any number of people and delivery to the place of work can be carried out by any transport and there is a place for our faithful Zubik, mobility and repeated use of which has repeatedly proved its high professional suitability.